Okay, here we are. This is my update to my indoor vegetable garden. And it has been 20 days since the last update from part two. So this is part three. And we're on day 54 today. And today is March the 2nd. So I've made a few changes and I've transplanted some of the plants and you will see it's looking like a garden. and I've started some new plants. I'll tell you about those in a moment. And look at that. Everything is really growing. Now I ended up adding um, a small grow light here. I was just curious how this grow light uh, would work. It's not as powerful as the other one. Uh, it has a few more red lights. Um, so I'll go through and show you some of the changes that have happened and keeping in mind this is all experimental what I'm doing with my indoor garden and right now I'm just using a bedroom that's supposed to be renovated <laughs> and it's um, being turned into my indoor garden room which I never intended but I just got um, the little green giant bug bite me and I wanted to get started with the indoor garden so away I went and I began this uh, at the beginning of January January 7th and I'm really excited I absolutely love gardening and having to wait to dig in my backyard. The winter is so long here in Canada and I'm in uh, southern Alberta so you know gardening doesn't begin here until sometime in May and that's a little bit long for me. So I've always wanted to try the grow lights and see what could be done, what what vegetables will grow nicely indoors. So I think this will be interesting to see over time which which plants grow the best, which ones thrive, which ones need a little bit more babying. Um, yeah. Now I just want to show you um, this here plant. I took it in uh, from outdoors and look at I I had cut it down because the leaves uh, had turned brown because it wasn't getting any light really and um, probably not enough water too but this is just one little strand that I just need to cut off but I, I did end up cutting it right down um, if you look back at video one and video um, part one and part two, you'll see that I had really cut it down. Now look at, look at, look at this. This is all new growth. And yeah, so by the time May comes, this little baby's gonna be ready to be put outside again once it, it's warm and safe to uh, be put outside. And then, Take a look at this one. This little guy's also, you know, he's been growing up some shoots. Look at, this is all, these are all new, all of this. And you can see in here, this part ended up dying off, but there's some new little shoots coming up. 
So how exciting is that? We have some happiness going on here. I'm so pleased. And also, sorry, the camera keeps moving back. I want to do this so it doesn't make your head dizzy. Um, and look at here. See, this one here is starting to grow up as well. So, and that was a whole new shoot because this one had died out and, and then this sprigged up. So I've just been keeping it watered uh, and it's just absorbing um, the overflow of light that's coming off of this light. And this light here is uh, 2000 uh, power, 2000 watts or whatever it is. And it's been an amazing light. I love this light. Um, it's very, very sturdy. This is warm. Um, and if you can kind of see how it's set up. I like this. It's got the, the hooks here and up top. There's the pulleys. And then I have it hooked into the ceiling. And when I want to raise it or lower it, I just use the pulleys. And that all comes with the light, the way it's set up. I got this light on Amazon. And yeah. And there is, um, it's kind of hard to see, but there is something to do with an adjustment here, which I haven't needed to do because the light is doing what I need it to do. So I'm going to go around and take you through each of the plants, what I've done uh, since I've transplanted them. And as you know, my very first thing that I planted was my mint. And I went, uh, when we were having a Chinook, I went to my backyard and just dug up some dormant mint plants, brought them in, and put it in a little container. Uh, then I eventually transplanted into this container. So I can just keep this indoors and just let it grow. And as it grows, I've just clipped it and used it in my iced tea. And in fact, uh, just recently, it's, it's not very big right now, but recently um, it had gotten up, oh, let's see, it, it got up pretty good. So I ended up clipping a bunch of the leaves down and I dehydrated it um, and then put it in my mason jars along with my other dehydrated mint uh, that I stored over the winter so far. And yeah, I, I, I will drink it as tea, just like that, add a little pinch of honey, but I use it mostly for my iced tea. And I do the natural iced tea, as I mentioned before, um, with my decaf Earl Grey tea, and I use honey. And I'll even steep some mint tea and just pour that in with my regular tea. Um, instead of putting fresh um, mint leaves you know, before when I didn't have it, when I didn't have fresh, I would just use my dehydrated tea or mint leaves. So yeah, you can do that. But for me, I mean, now that I've got this fresh mint, I just, you know, I, I you know, probably take off about that much and just throw it into my jug in the fridge and there it sits in my jug. And it's so nice. Okay, so I have three kale plants and I'm going to show you what's going on with my kale plants. Now, my kale plants uh, were transplanted from their little containers, uh, the little starting containers, and I put it in this container. Now, when I grew kale in my garden last year, my kale grew up and it was very big and lush and big leaves. Um, this one, uh, this, these kale are not growing very big and that's because the pot is not big enough for what's here. And so I ended up and, and I have, I had three of these pots this size 
that I had my kale in, or have my kale in, had and have. And I transplanted one of my kales that was the same size as this still is now. And I'll show you what happened. When I, when I transplanted my other kale that was the same size as this right now, it ended up, I put it in a much bigger container. Look at that. Now that's a big container. And this kale, look at the size of this kale in comparison. So I've already, you can see here, yeah, it's, it's, it's really grown up and they've sprouted. The leaves have just gotten so much bigger, but yeah, they were crowded and you know, I could probably even uh, have a bigger pot still and my, my leaves would get probably a little bit bigger yet. But for, for me, um, and for the space that I have at the moment, I went with that size. I do need another grow light uh, to go to the next level, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So, I have already been pinching and plucking. You can see right there, I've already pinched off some kale. Um, I've taken a few sprigs out here and there. Here's another one. Oops, where are we? There's another one. Uh, you know, and I and I try to just you know do it randomly throughout. So there's another one. Um, so I'm not shocking the plant too badly when I do pluck it out. And you know what? I'll come into this garden and I'll just like start plucking them off and just chewing on it. <laughs> Getting plants fresh, fresh from the garden immediately, you're getting 100% of the nutrients uh, and the enzymes. The enzymes uh, are very important. Um, once you cook something, you kill the enzymes. Uh, heat destroys enzymes. And that's what we need in our body to get our, you know, for our cellular function to operate properly. Uh, so that is the kale and I'm going to come over and show you my other kale plant. So this is, this, this, this one is in a small container as well. But if you notice like this kale is a little bit bigger still than this kale. This kale is not like super big, you can kind of see. Um, and then I have this kale. This is almost like the medium size and my and my kale in the other bigger basket is my larger kale. So you can see that I've plucked, you know, I've been chewing on my kale here. And it was, there was a lot. There was um, a lot of big leaves in here. So I, I could just do that. And yeah, and it's been okay. Um, you can see there's new growth happening in here since I've been plucking. New growth. Um, so yeah, you don't want to pluck too much uh, to the point where, you know, it's suffering terribly. Just a few off at a time. Okay, so that's my kale and my lettuce, my romaine lettuce is very, I, I found it interesting watching the lettuce because the romaine lettuce, when it was a little bit smaller, it's, it was flat and it was spread out. And I thought, oh, okay, that's how it's growing. Um, but just in, you know, couple, three weeks, look how the leaves are going up. Now it's starting to, you know, turn upwards like the romaine lettuce that we buy in the store. And I have a couple in there. I think I'm going to take those out of there and transplant them into another pot. But I have also been plucking just a few uh, from, you know, leaves from my romaine. But you can see 
That is just so exciting. So this is, you know, this is the beginning of the year and I want to keep this indoor garden going all the way through to next fall. I'm not going to put anything outside because that would defeat the purpose of growing indoors to see how the plants do. I want to be able to grow year round indoors. So here's my Swiss char and my Swiss char uh, it was transplanted and it was it was a little bit wobbly when I planted it and especially these ones over here but if you take a look like you know the plant is looking pretty steady now and it and it feels steady it's not floppy like it was before um, yeah and I have a couple of different colors of Swiss char going on there uh, but again, you know, these could use more room to grow. I'm sure that they probably would have been a lot bigger by now. But limited space, limited light. Um, I used what I had. And that's where we're at right now. So let's move on to the cabbage. And I am so excited about the cabbage. Look at how huge it's become and they're all growing sort of at a different rate this is my 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 younger smaller cabbage um, and look at this look at how amazing that is like it's 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 peak it's growing up so it's going to start forming its little cabbage ball and there's my other one. I have six of these. Six cabbage. And this this guy, he's my jumbo guy. And he's <laughs> he's outgrown his pot. And I've used um, mushroom containers. Um, this is mushroom containers that I bought from Costco. Uh, so when I was done with the mushrooms, I just, I'm using it for my transplants. And again, like look at this, it's growing up now. These, these leaves are spread out at the bottom. Same with this one, it's starting to grow up. And this one is in a different pot. This one's in a more um, cylinder shaped pot. And you can see that's the container that I use for my mushrooms. And they're housing my cabbage plants really well it's working out really good so these these cabbage plants I have six of them they are ready to be transplanted into their forever pot and yeah so before I could transplant I need to get another grow light um, because I need to set them up uh, for my light to be at a different height now eventually I'm going to have three grow lights but I've got my one right now and my second one will be coming and I will do part four with my next one and I will have my transplants done in part four so you can see what's going on there. Okay so now I don't know my spinach I started my spinach off if you remember in the kitty litter box it was the kitty litter box was probably about, you know, about that deep. And this one here is much deeper and much longer. So I thought, okay, you know, my, my spinach should be able to grow up. And it's grown up a little bit more. Um, when I first transplanted my spinach, they were a little um, pathetic looking. They were, <laughs> it was questionable if they were going to survive. But I just kept gently watering them, not overdoing it. And look at, like, they look pretty darn good, I'm thinking. Yeah. So, so far, I have spinach and kale that I can eat. Okay, so there's my kale. And in the back, this is my kohlrabi 
and I am absolutely amazed. My kohlrabi is growing really well. This um, container is a little bit higher, a little bit more dirt than all the other containers. Um, and yeah, there's a couple of plants in here that I want to transplant these little ones um, because they're getting over overtaken by the bigger plants. And if you take a look, let's see, let's see, there we go. You can see the kohlrabi is starting to form here and you can see it over here. And yeah, there we go. And I am so excited. I love kohlrabi. There we go. And look at this one in the back. Like, look at that one. That guy is going to be my big guy. Well, I'm going to move this, move this plant. Look at that. It's growing. It's getting bigger. It's starting to form. So, so I thought I'd put the kohlrabi in the back um, against the wall there so it wasn't going, the leaves weren't going to droop and tower over any of the other plants. And something very exciting ended up happening with my strawberries. Once, um, I, once I put this light in and I moved them to their own little table, they began to develop flowers. Well, look at that. Now, again, this is all experimental. Never did this before. Uh, so this is a new experience for me. And this undoubtedly will be a learning curve. But look at, look at my little flower. Now, outside the bees would come buzzing around and do their little bee thing. Um, but in here, there's no bees. And I wasn't sure if the strawberries would just work it out themselves or if they needed to be pollinated um, with the bees. So this is kind of what's happening. They're, dr they're actually drying out um, and I am keeping them watered so I have the question in my mind is can I pollinate these by brushing them with a brush uh, how, how I do that and or do I need bees you know or is it fertilizer um, or, you know, is there something going on with the roots? Especially this one here. This one's starting to get some foliage damage here. And, yeah, you can see that um, the strawberry is starting to form. Like, the little seeds that were around there are shriveling back. And, yeah, here's another one right here. So I'm just going to keep them going and uh, I wanted to see if these flowers would do their own thing, but I need to talk to the garden store and just get a little bit more information and look on the internet and that sort of thing. So my onions, these are my onions, and these have grown up a little bit more. Um, they're not as big as... I would imagine that they would have been for and, and and these little onions here are have been grown from seeds so they just have been taking their sweet old lazy time and these onions here um, I had some little onion bulbs that are um, that I had for pickling and some of them were starting to sprout little uh, green shoots so I decided to just plant them and just see what would happen and they're kind of keeling over right now um, yeah 
So I, I'm, I, I'm not super hopeful that it's going to create anything, but it's an experiment and this is all a learning curve. Okay, so now my new plants and this is going to be another learning curve. I finally, I planted tomatoes and these are Capari tomatoes and in fact they were, uh, the seeds I used um, were from uh, an actual tomato and I took, cut up the tomato, took the seeds out, put them on paper towel and uh, let the juice, you know, basically dry off and this is it here. So I just put them on the paper towel and kind of squish the juice off of them and let it dry out. So this is, yeah, the seed that planted there. And I planted two seeds for each um, cell. And I've got two here, one here, and one. So I've got four and possibly there is another one shooting up right here. Kind of hard to tell. It hasn't done much. But these little plants here, I'll let them go for a little bit and then I'll transplant those. And these here are new as well. And I also use the seeds from uh, the peppers. This is red pepper. And I planted two seeds for each cell. And this is a cucumber. And this this was from cucumber seed that I had for, you know, it's a cucumber, but they can be used for pickling as well. So my little, uh, this is just after about five, five days or so, um, a little shoot came up for my cucumber. And this is my green pepper here. And so I'm just waiting. And so I'm watering them with um, a, f a special fertilizer for um, seedlings. And that's what I've done so far. And by the way, here's my radishes. Uh, my radishes are really actually um, quite done. So I'm going to end up, let me see, let me see what's in there. Okay, so here's one. I'm just going to pull this one up. Yeah, so my radishes are not, you know, super big. But remember I talked about in the last video, I was wondering if they were going to be woody. And that's not big at all. Uh, but no, they it, it wasn't. I pulled up... Um, I pulled up one of the radishes and it wasn't woody at all. But these have been growing really long enough. So I'm going to end up using this pot for something else. Or I'll probably just, you know, grow some more radishes. Um, they've kind of had their moment. And again, you know, I might not have had the right you know, I might have needed to give them some kind of nourishment or something that'll give them a little extra boost. Um, but I've got more radishes I can plant, and radishes grow fairly quickly. So this pot's going to be done. Now, what I'm going to do next is add another grow light, and I'm going to add another table. I'm going to transplant this is my scotch or my scottish kale scottish curly kale i'm going to transplant this into a bigger pot and my cabbages are all going to get their own big individual pots they're forever pots oh i almost forgot my little glorious watermelon look at how big my watermelon has grown. Look at that. I am so excited. These water these watermelon plants are bigger than what I attempted outside last year and 
I am just thrilled to no end. I just, I'm very excited about this. Look at that. This was my smaller one and it, and it's really started to shoot up. Um, but they're both growing so nicely. They're actually, they've actually grown better than the watermelon plants that I tried to grow uh, in my garden last year. And we get really hot weather here in August and I would have expected they would have just really blossomed along, but they didn't. And the year before I tried watermelon and cantaloupe, just nothing came of it. Um, they, they really barely even grew any foliage. Um, they withered out and died. But in here, uh, they're a little bit more protected and babied. And so when they eventually start to get their flower, uh, I, want, I don't want to miss an opportunity with watermelon because, you know, it, it, they take so long to grow. Um, so I'm going to do as much research as I can and figure out once I get to the flowering stage, can I pollinate them? Can I, you know, deal with it myself? Can, we, can I grow this indoors or do I need bees? How will this work? So they will also get their own plant or, or their own pot uh, for indoors. And so that I can, I could move them outside if I, you know, really needed to. But the whole purpose of this indoor garden is to see what I can accomplish growing indoors. Um, you know, because, I mean, it, it's just the thought of, you know, what if something were to happen, um, you know, where the atmosphere or the soil or the conditions were not good outside and you can't grow a garden outside. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm very curious. I like to know how to do things uh, the old-fashioned way, how to do things from scratch, and um, yeah, how possible is it? And I'm really, really curious about how to make an indoor garden work. So you have your fruits and your vegetables, and so that you can actually survive on it. Um, you know, I just, I love the idea of not having to go out in the winter to the store to go get lettuce, to go get tomatoes, um, you know, cucumbers, and you know, some of the very basic things that I buy that I eat um, all the time. And, you know, peppers, uh, onions, you know. Um, so come this summer, I'll end up doing uh, my root vegetables outside uh, in the ground, and then I'll do any of my above ground type vegetables uh, with my grow light indoors and yeah so here's my here's my little here's my little teapot short and stout isn't that cute this this teapot is so darling I love this teapot but I discovered one day that it had a crack and I was so sad and I didn't want to throw it out because it just looks so pretty. I, I love the blue in it. I love that style of teapot. And then I decided, well, I may as well turn it into a little pot. So I put my romaine lettuce, and this one, if you recall from the last video, I, I started it. Um, it's, it's a cut off from store-bought romaine. And uh, I, I cut the stem off and put it in water and grew a big long root, and then I buried it. And, you know, I've taken a couple of leaves off, tasted it, and it's actually pretty good. So, it does work. It's amazing. So, it's possible. My indoor garden. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Okay. So, that's my update. Stay tuned for part four when I add a table, add a, another grow light one of these and do my big transplants and we'll see what happens next. Stay tuned for my next video and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if, you en if you're enjoying my indoor garden video how-to. <laughs> so 
If you're enjoying these videos, do subscribe, like, share, and throw in a comment. Let me know uh, what you think. And, uh, you know, I'm open to any suggestions uh, that you know that work. And yeah, so, I mean, we're all in this together. And if we can learn from each other, wonderful. So until next time, subscribe and stay connected. Watch for my upcoming videos. I have other videos as well. Um, but part four will be coming next. Stay tuned.